morning. It's early on Monday, day six. Hi. It's cold. It's a cold morning. Um, so I'm all cozy under a blanket on my green chair. Um, I didn't read any more of this last night, but I started again this morning. Um, I've been talking about the uh, woman that got taken from her family um, and her kind of story that's the grandmother and her story has come to an end um, and then we got the perspective of her brother who watched her being taken and what happened to her family after she was taken and that was so uh, eye-opening and devastating and the way that Larissa Berendt explained the systematic stripping of dignity and control of the First Nations people by the white authorities was, uh, was, was really, um, it kind of was an aha moment for me. I, I knew all of these things, but when you see it kind of laid out and then there's a character there that it's affecting and you see how it affects him as a man, so interesting to me and um, makes complete sense for a lot of things. So, um, yeah, we kind of went through that with Sunny or Yoroki and then I just read the start of the next chapter um, the grandmother, Garibaldi, she had to give up a child. I guess there's a spoiler there somewhere, but anyway, she had to give up a child. And um, now we've moved on to that child's perspective and where that child ended up. So it's kind of just kind of moved through of all the different perspectives of all the different players involved. And I just think that's that's really cool because otherwise I would have been wondering what happened to that child, right? Anyway, I, I'm really enjoying sitting here. Oh, you can see the colour of the sunrise. Ah, oh, the colours of sunrise and sunset around here are to die for. Okay, I'll talk to you when I have more to say. I just read the most powerful chapter on loss of identity. I am so um, aware, I feel really aware at the moment. Um, the chapter was on the son that got taken from Garibaldi, the grandmother, and his lack of knowledge of his um, Indigenous roots that he never got told, and his approach to um, finding out he was adopted. Um, but he got told he was of Italian heritage, not um, a First Nations man. And then Larissa shared his view on what is happening to the First Nations people. And it was so um, entrenched in science and evolution because he was a scientist. It was, it was so mind blowing to see from that perspective. And then to also, you know, he was he was raised in an Irish household and then got told he was adopted and originally Italian. And then that loss and restlessness that he felt because he didn't feel like he belonged to any of those races. It was unbelievable. It was very, very well done. My favourite chapter so far, that's for sure. Whew. Kids are still asleep. I'm going to keep reading. I moved, that was in 1946, so I've moved to 1960 now, so I'm moving through the family and how all of these, you know, something from the very start of Garibaldi being taken from her family, forcibly removed, has had this chain reaction through the generations. I'm really enjoying the story. I've said that a million times. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to say it a million times more. just the next chapter from when I spoke to you it is just the devastation is unbelievable just just 
the ripple effect is unbelievable. We've moved on to Garibaldi Sun. So we've had so we've had Garibaldi the grandmother. We've had her brother, Yuroki. We've had her son that got taken from her. Now we've seen the fate of her other four children, five children. And now we're going to follow along with one of them. The way we got introduced to him was, was sad. I'm so connected to this family and seeing the pain just transferred from generation to generation is just insanity. A little blue fairy wren is back. Can you see him? Well, his colours don't look as brilliant in the film, but I assure you he's lovely. He visits that tree every morning. Has a little play in the sun. <laughs> sitting in the sun it's freezing um the first little one has woken up and now he wants to play a game of course so i made it to there i don't know what that is 200 and something 210 and we are going okay Lily. we're going through monopoly deal oh we're going through monopoly deal <laughs> That's the game we're playing. We're going through each of Garibaldi's um, children and how they ended up and the different effects. Baby, can you sit on the mat, please? Okay. And the different, the different way that all of these horrible, systematic, racist things affected them. So, yeah, it's really great. I've only, I'm sort of 100 pages left to go, so... When I get another chance today, I'll sit down with it. Time for cards. I looked out the window at the tree with the fairy wren bird and there are so many butterflies in there. So I just thought I'd come out and try and capture them, not through the window. <gasps> They're gorgeous. <laughs> I've also remembered about coming outside is that my house is colder inside than it is out so yeah I forgot about that excellent excellent <laughs> guys I'm in this weird situation where Patty's still asleep and it's 8 30 in the morning so I'm just trying to keep everything quiet so he can sleep for as long as he needs to Fitz and Benny are having their breakfast and I'm gonna pick up my book again so I just wrapped up for the morning but no way. I'm just going to keep reading until Patty wakes up. That's kind of my cue when both kids are awake and I'm going to ride this to the last minute. <laughs> We're getting into desperation stakes with coronavirus and no haircuts. We didn't do it before the lockdowns kicked in. So, bend down. Up on your knees so I can reach your head. <laughs> it's time for a hair tie. Okay, let me just get this little top bit. Does that hurt? Kind of. <laughs> At least it's out of your face, huh? Yes. That little bit coming out. <laughs> Is that alright? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cute. 
He's awake. 12 hours sleep down. Now we're going to do some body tracing. Fitzy's just learning about the human body, so we thought we would Chase face around him. <laughs> Off. I have um oh we did this <laughs> we did all the bones it was a lot of fun and Patty we're planning our Easter feast so Patty was doing that so, yeah and then I started cleaning out Fitzy's room this always involves throwing out a lot of crap secretly you know like he won't use that, he won't use that, and throwing it all out. So I've just sent them outside so I can embark on that journey. Paddy picks it up. He knows exactly what he's got in his room. But Fitzy, I can get away with it. Here are the stupid bubblegum thing and this stupid thing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, and this stack of just so many drawings and paintings i know i you know like i feel bad when i throw out his drawings and paintings but really i've got a gazillion of them he does about 20 a day <laughs> i've got a cull at some stage but yeah i kind of did it yeah just got a vacuum and then and then we'll reconnect i just wanted to show you the stash i managed to throw out now right I finish work out there I go into the kitchen and get dinner ready I have a client call in an hour so I need to kind of get organized for that and then I need to come in here I mean look at this beautiful afternoon light that I need to sit in and finish my book just reminding myself of how much I've got to read I'm very thirsty 214 so I've got a hundred pages to read so it would be nice here's a plan Are you ready i get the kitchen done and dinner organized now i have my client call until about half a six and then i read for a couple of hours to finish this off sounds good in theory right can i achieve it can it happen Let's find out. <laughs> seven look I put my fairy lights on and sat in here and had my work meeting it was really nice just had a shower totally cozying down now so let's get this book read <laughs> for a little walk <laughs> so just the last little stint and then we can chat so much to chat about it's, uh, 
I'll check in a sec. Okay. I did it. I finished. <sighs> it was a bit tough going at the end there. I started to get a bit sleepy, but this is really good. This opened up a whole lot of interests for me. Um, it opened my eyes to a lot of things I didn't realize. The idea of um, systemic racism is um, really well portrayed in here. Um, the idea of shame and that shame is what a lot of First Nations people feel in the education system, amongst their friends, um, in institutions they're taught to feel the shame of having darker skin. And um, yeah, that was also really well written about and explained in this book. Um, so yeah, the one really horrible event that just had so many ripples that affected everybody in the family from, we started in 1912, I think, and we ended up in 1994, 2004, or whatever it was. But the ripples that came from that one event are just amazing and totally warranted. Um, yeah, I got such a great understanding of all of that from this story and these characters. The one little criticism I will have is that this book is about, you know, it's built on the premise that this woman goes back to her ancestral lands to learn about her family. And there's a little bit at the start and a tiny bit at the end. Um, it would have been fine to just have been the story about Garibuli and what happened to her and her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren. Um, we didn't really need that other story because it kind of, it, it cheapened it a little bit. And there was this kind of, you know, this lawyer lady, you know, thinking about this guy that she loved in France that she should have married and whatever. And just like, come on, we want to, you know, there were such great themes of, you know, all the things I spoke about, um, but at the core of racism and it just gets cheapened by the romantic thoughts that, that, that don't even really matter. But like I said, that is 10 pages at the start and 10 pages at the end. And the, you know, 300 pages in between were well-written, emotive, amazing characters, great family saga that had such an eye-opening, um, yeah, gave me an, just a huge understanding um, of how people felt, their emotions, not just the facts that happened to them. So I just, I, I loved this. I really loved it. And um, yeah, a really great book about our First Nations people. Really, I hate the word informative, but it just gave me this understanding that I didn't have before about systemic racism, about shame that is sort of underhandedly heaped onto our First Nations people. Really cool. And a really good understanding of the times. Like it start, like I said, it starts from the early 1900s and goes all the way through. So, yeah. You can see the different forms of racism and the different forms of shame and yeah, how that all presents itself in the different generations. Very cool. Okay, I'm going to stop rambling. Loved it. Cool. Another book down for Ozzy April. And my first Indigenous read. It's great. Okay, I'm really tired. I'm going to go to bed and I'll see you guys in the morning. We'll pick a new book. Okay, good night.